All right, I am going to call the Neary Building Committee um, Communication Subcommittee meeting to order. It is Tuesday, March 26, 2024, and it is 10.40 a.m. Um, all voting members are present, as well as a few of our ex officio members, and I know Kathleen will be coming back in here momentarily. Um, first order of business is approval of the meeting minutes from March 8th of 2024. Were there any questions or comments on those? Seeing none, I'll move to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Roger? Aye. Denise? Aye. And I am aye. Um, the next item is the survey results. So um, as I indicated on our full building committee meeting last night, we did get 353 responses. Thought it was a good mix of community members, both those with and without school-age children, um, both, on both sides of that, right? Those that had not entered the schools, those that were in the schools, and then those that now have um, their children have graduated from the public schools. Um, as well as um, I thought it was decent engagement from the faculty and staff as well. Um, the what I did was um, essentially in Word and in PowerPoint, just kind of the high level um, results, just to kind of see the trends. I'm happy to talk about the trends here, but also I would denote that on average for any of the free form questions, there is about 100 to 150 responses to each of those questions. Um, we need someone to format that. It's not ready for, like, we'll, we'll work on getting a format out that people can read through. Um, I did have a chance to glance through them, though, um, and I do believe that um, the information is going to be very useful to how we as a subcommittee digest them, but I wasn't going to, given the survey closed on Sunday, wasn't going to try to format something and ask you all to read them. Um, some comments are very practical. Some are just completely out of left field, as one could imagine. Um, certainly a lot of comments about cost um, and, you know, you know, to be expected on a project of this size. Um, but I can tell you, I was able to at least, and we'll get to this a little bit later on frequently asked questions. It certainly charted a direction for which way to go with how we start to draft some frequently asked questions that were ultimately going to the website. So I guess I wanted to pause um, in A, see if there's any comments or questions on like the, the three charts I sent. And then B, um, make sure everyone's okay with like having someone um, take these raw results and format them for us and come back at another time to discuss those once you've all had a chance to think about what they mean for us as a communication subcommittee. My intent would be to provide them to the whole committee at our next meeting as well. How we talk about that, I think, will be interesting because I don't want to dive into any one comment, um, but it'll be more like themes. So that that's just a formatting thing we're going to have to work through. So with that, Roger, uh, I see your hand up. So I, I'm just uh, I'll just make a comment because I note that on the chart uh, that asks for the preferred grade con the preferred grade configuration for the Neary School. The uh, responses for two through five uh, totaled more than all of the other choices put together. So it's almost sixty percent. Yeah. Yeah, and if three. Roger, did you say two through five? I did say two through five. Yes. If you add the three through five, you know, if you take two through five and three through five, that's again. Oh so, so yeah, yeah, that's overwhelming. Yeah. Any other comments or thoughts of of how else or everyone wants to receive the data? Okay, so we will work on getting that summarized. Um, Greg, I might need to just talk to you offline a little bit about that. Um, and then my, my thought would be that the communication subcommittee dives into the details of that and brings back a strategy to the overall committee.
but that the overall committee has access to the data um, once formatted. Does that make sense? I just don't want to go into any one person's response in an open meeting with 15 people, right? We, and we don't know who, who these respondents are, but um, I'd rather try to find a way to summarize some of the themes here. Um, website update and feedback for launch. Um, go ahead, Roger, before I go into that. Yeah, just a quick question. Did anyone but me have some difficulty, uh, for example, on the chart, uh, um, I am a, and then there were, you know, six responses in the first column. Did anyone other than me have difficulty seeing all of the text in the first column? Yeah, it's, it's cut off the way that the formatting works. So okay. that's not you. Um, that's okay. just, um, that so, was my attempt to take survey data in the way that they have it. And there is no way to expand it, at least that I've been able to figure out. Greg may have some magic that I'm not aware of, but. Yeah, Jason, uh, that was just to give you an idea. Jason, yeah. you have access to the dashboard, not the full survey tool. Um, so we can provide the data in a more um, usable format. I was mainly looking, Roger, for you. You probably could tell, though, right? That the mix of the, even though it got cut off a little bit, oh, uh, you could definitely tell the themes, which is why I wanted to not bury that, that, that punchline message. No, you can certainly tell, um, um, you, you know, that you couldn't necessarily, you know, kind of get a fine, a fine definition, you know, um, I'm a parent, you know, and then there was some information that was cut yeah. off and the community member with, but you could certainly get a, a general idea from, from the text that was there. Yeah. Agreed. Um, okay. Ready to go into website. So, um, the website is built in terms of a uh, back end. There's no content on it yet, though. Um, sorry. So all the 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 frame the framework is now there for populating um, by our team. Um, how we do that in an, at what rate we do that, I think, is up to us. But I think what I wanted to try to do here today is kind of set some protocols and boundaries um, so we don't have to come back to have a meeting, Every, you know, especially if we're taking documents that have already been reviewed in a public forum and posting those. I know we talked about this a little bit last time, but um, I think there is some urgency to get the, the website launched. Um, I'm also cognizant of how difficult it is to schedule a meeting, um, even with this small subgroup. Uh, so what I really wanted to do is knowing that the framework is now ready, um, what is everyone comfortable with um, just automatically posting and providing feedback as, as you kind of peruse it, realizing that it may be live, or whether, you know, we want to go to the other extreme of getting it post, getting it basically all populated, having a soft launch that only the communication subcommittee can peruse through and provide high level comments, then do an official launch. Obviously, I'm trying to balance um, review and timeliness and knowing that obviously it's important to start getting messaging out. So what I wanted to do is identify what the communication subcommittee wants to see so that then we can then schedule another meeting very, in very short order um, to understand, to, to sign off on anything that the communication subcommittee wants to see. I will throw out there that any frequently asked questions though, will certainly come back to the subcommittee. So that's not that's not open for kind of a call it debate. It's more the the structure and the content that's going up that is more, you know, fact as opposed to, you know, responses to open ended questions. Any strong views? One way or another. Go ahead, Roger. This is just a question. Um, I know we discussed, uh, are, are we talking about 
initial initial content or changes to content as as uh, time as things progress? I think it's twofold, right? So initial content is clearly what I'm focused on today. Okay. But then there may be, then I think it progresses to something that didn't hit the initial content because we ran out of time, but we had enough substance to post, right? And then obviously changes over time will, will be another factor. But I think it's going to be three phases is, you know, what do people want to see before the public can see it? Then what is the protocol if we have additional information to add um, as it goes? And then if we're going to do a substantive change, I would think we would just meet on it. I don't know that that's necessarily something we have to discuss. I thought if, if I could just, can, just, I'll just finish up. I thought we discussed before the fact that when we talked about, that yeah, we discussed when we talked about, all right, um, going, going forward changes. Uh, clearly, the frequently asked questions, responses, if you will, or postings, so that, that's something that the communications subcommittee would review before it gets out to the public. Um, but um, I, I don't know how to actually de de describe this. Maybe someone else can use a term. Sort of ongoing um, content uh, changes that would not be, um, you know, not be contentious, if you will, uh, that, that the district, you know, would, could be, could be making those changes as we go along. Um, but maybe I misremembered that. Th that was, that was where we kind of left the last meeting. Um, but now that we actually, I think we're at an inflection point of like, I guess what I'm trying to answer is like the initial launch is um, does this subcommittee, once the district populates it, do you want to have another meeting to work through what's in that initial launch beyond frequently asked questions? That's, I think, the question that I have right this second. Greg, I know you had your hand up and for a second, but did not anymore, or you had pulled it down. I didn't want to jump. I didn't want to jump in before you had your comment. Yeah, I was just echoing your remarks in that what we're what is being posted is factual information about the project. It's not opinion or um, so. I think from a district perspective, I think it's really challenging to try to maintain a website and then get everything approved to be posted on the website. I think from my understanding of the last meeting, what we're going to post are documents that are produced by the Nary Building Committee subcommittees and Scanscott and Arrow Street that are just factual documents. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so so I guess then, unless anyone's opinion has changed, which mine certainly hasn't, um, because I think we're going to become an administrative nightmare if we try to do anything differently from that, um, is um, there will be a website launched here in the next week or two, um, barring any delays and the ability to upload data. And um, then we will have a standing subcommittee item to provide feedback on the website where you could provide feedback along the way um, of, of changes or enhancements that you'd like to see based on, on people using it. That That's how I would plan to run it. But I'm just being very cautious right now just to make sure I'm respecting everyone's review time and all of that, but also I really don't want to have a meeting every time there's any sort of substance updated, especially if we've already discussed it as a full building committee. Go ahead, Roger. So let me then specifically respond to your question about input to the initial population of the website. Um, so my personal view, and I would be certainly curious to know what you and how you and Denise feel, and maybe even uh, some Skanska input as far as what they've seen happen, you know, at, uh, on this initially. My personal view is if it's factual, um, I, I'm curious, but I wouldn't hold up getting the website populated simply to wait for me to kind of look at factual stuff and say, yeah, okay. But that's 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 sort of my vote for whatever it's worth and. I could change my mind uh, 
you know, if I hear different responses. Go ahead, Denise. You know, I totally agree. If it's factual and it's been presented to our committee and whatever, I don't see any reason that we have to go over it again and beat a dead horse. But if it's something that's up in the air or is controversial, then I think we should look at it. Okay. But I totally agree. Okay. So then um, here's what I think um, we'll do. Once the website is populated, there is a test link that we will be able to provide. Um, what we'll do is we'll give you all like a two day window, basically like to peruse around it. If there's anything, because we can't then go back and forth and deliberate over email, if there's anything that you see on there, you're like, whoa, this wasn't what I agreed to, you know, then we can call a meeting. Otherwise we're gonna just publish um, based on that. And then what we'll do is we'll have a standing committee update um, both at the full building committee and as a communication subcommittee for people to provide any feedback or, hey, my neighbor was trying to use the website and found it really challenging to understand the project timeline sort of thing. That way we can then take it back and, and think about how to rehash it. Good on that. Um, and then I will just denote from a formatting perspective, which is essentially what we paid the designer for, they worked with Greg, Cheryl, Mariana, and team to match the district's logos, colors, et cetera. So that's all you know, tied into existing themes that are candidly already probably, um, you know, you probably don't bring to the school committee, Greg, but like already part of kind of the, the navigation that some of you are probably already used to. Um, okay. Um, and then the final uh, substantive item on our agenda is um, the frequently asked questions for the website. So um, I did draft answers to frequently asked questions. I had every intention of sharing them here today, but I really think Greg needs to review them before we bring them to the subcommittee. A lot in, in some are blank because they relate to operations of the district. Um, so, um, Greg, I don't want to put you on the spot because I know you have the educational plan um, that's due this week too that needs to take priority. But if we think about kind of taking those frequently asked questions, trying to have them in the website launch and um, trying to schedule a meeting for the subcommittee to kind of regroup on those, um, do you have any estimate of like, is that a this late this week, next week, two weeks out, four weeks out, sort of thing. You're on mute. Early next week. Okay. So um, I think what we'll try to do is um, schedule a meeting from mid to late next week. So that if as long assuming that aligns with the website launch date, um, we could get those posted um, interchangeably. Um, I think there are some questions that aren't going to create discussion. I think there's a lot of other questions that are very loaded at this time. And while we may instinctively want to answer them, they, the best answer may be to be determined. Um, and I think that's, I think we're, you know, Denise, Roger, Kathleen, I'm looking at, at you two in addition to Greg. Um, we're going to need some judgment, right? And obviously, if we talk about in this meeting, um, certainly still going to be public, but at the same time, um, you know, we may, may all have three different opinions, four different opinions of where th certain decisions are at. And I think we need to err on the side of um, less decision at this point. You know, we shouldn't feel committed to say um, X is going to happen or Y is going to happen or Y may happen. We should just say that's part of feasibility. So that's, that, that was my view as I started to, to think through some of these things, but then I probably answered the same question four different ways in my head before I started typing something. So I imagine we'll have some some good discussion on that. I think from a protocol, once we do circulate the FAQs, um, content's going to have to be discussed in the meeting. Um, but if you don't like where I put a period or Greg put a comma, um, you know you certainly can send those in advance. Um, but if there's substance, we have to do that in in the open open meeting just because there's only three of us. So even if I email it to Denise, that's a quorum um, right there. So just be cautious of that. That's the, the downfall of a, a small subcommittee.
Go ahead, Denise. I think I, I, I really do agree with you. I think we just have to be careful that, you know, we aren't so um, aggressive in answering these questions when we really are not at that point or we don't have an answer. And it we have to be careful of that because it's a political um, climate that you want to be able to maintain. Mm -hmm. So I think we just have to be careful. And I'm sure there's questions, like you said, that we'd want to majorly say, whoa, whoa, whoa. But until we actually know or we're at that stage, we have to be very careful politically is my is my comment. Yeah. Go ahead, Roger. Completely agree, Denise. Um I, I do absolutely agree with Denise and Jason, you may have already mentioned this, um, but I was looking at my homework for this meeting and and uh so, so how does a question become a frequently asked question? I mean, a, a single question would or wouldn't necessarily become. And I know you were talking about something yeah. controversial. So how, yeah. what, 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 what's involved in that process? So, so here's how I looked at it. Right. So, um, we just did a survey. We got over 300 responses. Right. Um, when you get this, when we're able to pull the data out into a format you can actually use. Um, what you're going to find is the same question got asked four times. Right. In, right. You asked it one way. I asked it another. Kathleen asked it another. Denise asked another. But it's all about when's the school going to open? Lots of questions about what's going to happen. You know, my kid's going to be in near the next three years. What does that mean for them? I don't want any noise. Right. So there's a lot of opinion, too, right, that goes into these questions. So there, there's questions and then fact. Right. Um, so to me, um, at least in the initial data set um, of how I came up with what a frequently asked question was, is if the question I thought was something I've heard more than once, it made it onto the list. Fair enough. Uh, whether it be in writing or whether it be running into someone at a sports game or something like that. And then I think what's going to then happen is Greg, myself, any of you may get emails from the community and say, um, you put out this timeline, but I really want to understand what it means during the construction phase. And maybe we have to drill down into a second question about the timeline during the construction phase. And obviously we couldn't answer that right the second, because you don't even know when we have an estimate of when we might put a shovel in the ground, but we have no idea what we're putting the shovel in the ground for um, those sorts of things. So I think um, what this committee's job going forward will be is to have a pulse on the community to say, you know, Roger, you had homework, for example, of right going to the senior center, right? Like I know I'm not expecting you did your homework, but I, I did. Uh, my, I did my homework. Okay, please, please. please. <laughs> this is being um, recorded. But, I always right, do my homework. Right. So, so right, and then maybe Denise is talking to a different, you different group in the community, and I'm talking to someone else, and Greg and Kathleen, right, have their own networks that they're going to be talking with, especially obviously in their roles. And they may bring the community, the committee, or say, let's add this to the agenda. I've gotten this question five times in the last week. That to me is like how I would gauge what a frequently asked question is. And then those questions will evolve over time. Our answer to project timeline today is not the answer to project timeline a year from now, right? If you have a failed vote at town meeting, that changes everything right to, to people right and what is the failed vote for right not that obviously we want any of that but you know those are the things that you're going to hit roadblocks along the way um that you'll need to adapt these questions to so that was very long-winded but hopefully answered your question sure thank you and greg's going to say something far more succinct now <laughs> i wonder if we should also take a look at recent building project websites and steal some of their faqs I'm sure a lot of the FAQs that we're going to be asked, we can predict. So in addition yes. to the themes from the survey, just identifying, you know, if, if people have ideas of, okay, this is a question we know we're going to get, we can generate it. That's a great idea. Go ahead. So in response to Greg, I was just going to say that um, Skanska, we can, we have, a couple of websites that we where we put in the FAQ that we can share with you, Jason. So that'd be perfect. Even if you can, um, I think what would be good, unless someone disagrees with this, 
why don't you send us an independent list of questions? We're not going to share what our questions are right now. And then I think that will probably make sure we've got the right population. Okay. I like the idea. Um, okay. And then again, it, this will evolve over time. And um, I can tell you that um, someone like just even like looking at some of the Facebook posts that are now out there and even just looking at some of the town meeting discussion that occurred, people are aware that this project is now coming. Um, right. I think it was referenced on multiple completely unrelated capital articles. <laughs> oh, we have Neary coming sort of thing. Uh, right. So people use that as uh, I don't know what I think of, you know, I think it was the library, but I think there was other things that they came up on um, that, even the town budget, I think, where people were just like, what's what's this all mean sort of thing. So I think that's healthy discussion and obviously going to be an important one as we move forward. Um, OK. Um, I don't, we don't have any public here, so we don't have to do public comment. Uh, in terms of meeting schedule, Denise and Roger, can you just send me an email after this with any schedule limitations Wednesday through next Friday. So that would be the um, third through the fifth. And then we'll lay, I'll give that to Marianne and Cheryl and we'll layer that on with Greg and um, Kathleen and Stephanie's calendars. You both have your hands up. Um, my 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 question to you is: Are we looking at day or night, or how I did think you want? We're to trying. Do? We're trying to keep the subcommittee during the day, okay, if at all okay. possible. And I I usually use the boundaries of like nine to three, um, mm -hmm. but obviously we can go on either side of that if if we can't get schedules to align. So what you're asking Wednesday through Friday? Yes, between nine and three, and if we have to go okay. beyond then, we'll go beyond then. Thank you. Uh, Roger, you had your hand up, down a few times. Now it's up. Then I'm going to go to Kathleen. So go ahead. Right. Who wants to go? I don't care. I'm working. Well, I took it down so that Kathleen would get ahead of me, actually. Right. It, it was purposeful. All right. All right. Go ahead, Kathleen. Thank, thank you, Roger. Uh, we we have NCAS on Wednesday, just so you know. that's I'm, I have to be available for that. So if we do choose Wednesday, it, it might be iffy for me, depending on what's happening. Okay. My plan was to take whatever Roger and Denise get layer on mine and then hopefully try to get as much of all of you, but that's good to know. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Kathleen, the beauty of being in an ex officio role um, is um, you can get the FAQs and run down the hall and, and give, them, give any of your comments to Greg. Denise, Roger, and I don't have that luxury. Um. It, well, as long as he opens his door for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Which he sure. always does. Yeah. All right, Roger. Uh, so qu quickly, uh, and I have actually two things. Quickly, it seems like the our definition of frequently asked questions is a combination of a question that was so far is a question that was asked more than once or a question that hasn't been asked at all, but we think maybe it's going to be asked. Yes. All right. So um, I, I I don't know that this. So so regarding your your comment about my homework, I actually look at it more of you sending me on a mission, you know, to engage the seniors about communication. I, I've done that. I can give you either through public comment because this isn't exactly on the agenda, or I can just give you a quick summary, okay, of of what I've of of my communication with Pam. Uh, both uh, phone calls and emails. Um, so I'm going to move to other business, and I think that's an appropriate spot for you to give us an update. Fair. I will not entertain discussion on it, and then we can add any discussion to the next agenda. So go with your update. So um, I have a question. Did you ever engage the seniors... Jason, in uh, or the Council on Aging on the building feedback at some point in time in the past? 
Building feedback related to what? Ah, I don't know. Um, so I, it was just a note that I didn't follow up with Pam on. And, but her comment was that the Council on Aging provided lots of building feedback the last time. So maybe this had to do with uh, safety complex. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I think it's related. Not reading. I'm reading between the lines and you should confirm this is my guess it's related to the Woodward discussion of converting that last year or two years ago. And then the Council on Aging sat on the Community Center Exploration Committee over the last year that talked about repurposing FIN. So apparently the Council of Aging it, it does provide a lot of feedback. Uh, so so Pam, Pam suggested, I'm not looking for a response. I'm just gonna sort of lay a couple things out that uh, their newsletter, is is a very effective way to get information out. However, uh, the next newsletter is going to be July, August, and content would have to be in by May. So that's not going to that wouldn't be something that would happen quickly. Um, also, doing doing a, a breakfast or something like this, uh, which which uh, they would set up, uh, and they could do it once a quarter. They could do it once a month. Whatever uh, whatever we would like. Uh, um, or uh, coffee and donuts or something. I really don't need donuts, but, um, you know, I guess I, I would drink the coffee. Um, so that's kind of generally, you know, how, sh how she sort of recommended that we think about approaching it. Um, there are also two active groups. Um, one is called, and this is an email, the Dull Men's Group, D-U-L-L. -L. So I probably fit that, okay, uh, in that... Uh, a lot of people view me as a dull man, but um, that's a group of about 30 men that are pretty active. Uh, Bill Harrington leaves that and to kind of have a presentation for them. Then there's also uh, some, a group called the Trailblazers group, which is, you know, men and women, about 60 to 70 people, pretty active. Marianne Anderson runs that. So, you know, it, it, things could be presented to the groups and these are active groups. Uh, we could have... Um, we could have, you know, breakfast or coffee type things, and we should probably get in the newsletter. So not looking for a response, but maybe just some things for people to think about. Now, would you like me to write this up, Jason, uh, to sort of summarize this and send you something or that'd be helpful? Um, I think what we'll do is we'll have a, I don't need it written up. Okay. Um, I think what we should do though, is I think about future agendas for this subcommittee is like that was clearly your homework and you viewed it as a mission. And I think you've accomplished the mission um, without going any further. Um, so now it's like, how are we actioning each of these things, right? So if Denise goes off and is dealing with user group A tomorrow, right? Like she may say, I need a newsletter write up for that, that group, right? So now how are we taking that messaging and making sure it's consistent, but also tailored towards the audience? Um, I think is a lot of what we're gonna do. So I would say, I'm going to have like a strategy update, right? Um, in, in public reach out, like as a standing item, right? Which is where you would be able to give an update of, I think we need to be doing this with the seniors, you know, and I've gotten more feedback that I need to be doing even more of that. Um, and then we can then expand that with other groups, right? Imagine you sports groups are gonna come into play if we ever start talking about any sort of fields being compromised or added at the facility, right? Because there are existing fields there. Um, I imagine theater groups are gonna have a say or wanna have a say in the auditorium aspects of, of this. Um, again, beyond the educational missions that we're obviously very focused on accomplishing. And there's probably a hundred other groups I'm not mentioning, but those were just a way of doing that. So I think what I would bring to the next meeting and any future subcommittee meetings, Roger, are items like, hey, this is my action plan and this is what I need help with. Otherwise, I think you're basically free to just go and continue to educate um, while staying on message, which you're very good at. Fair enough. All right. So any other business that anyone wants to conduct today? All right, so everyone has their homework to send me availability and then we'll coordinate from there for mid to late next week. I will make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, Denise? Aye. Roger? Aye.
and IMI as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody.